What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. FantasyTeamAdvisors.com, bringing home the bacon MLB DFS video for Sunday, July 9th. We are back. This is the last Sunday until the All-Star break. So let's make this a fantastic, fantastic video. Let's make it a fantastic last day before this much-needed little break during the week for the All-Star game. And then we'll be back with you guys on Friday with some more content. If you haven't already checked it out, fantasyteamadvisors.com, FTA+. Plus. I did it in yesterday's video. We have a couple of the promo codes left, or discount codes left. So the NFL season pass is $199. We have early bird special right now. If you use the promo code NFLVIP, all one word, all capital letters, NFLVIP, you get $100 off for the NFL season pass. So if you are interested in that, we do have a couple of the discount codes that have not been used yet. Again, it's first come, first serve. Go check it out, fantasyteamadvisors.com slash FTA. NFL season pass, NFL VIP, you'll get $100 off. Get it for $99 right now, whereas an all-access monthly pass is $25 a month for the six months of the season. So good luck to anyone who uses that. Again, anytime a video gets at least 50 likes and you leave a positive comment and you are a subscriber to our YouTube channel, we throw your name into random.org and you will win a free week of MLB content. Anyone who, or if that video, same video gets 100 likes, we do the exact same thing, you win a month. If the video gets 125 likes, which I think we can get this to cap off the first half of the season, 125 likes. If this video gets 125 likes, someone will win the rest of the MLB season absolutely free. All you got to do is get those likes, be a subscriber, and leave a positive comment. So we're going to, this is everyone who commented yesterday's video. We're going to randomize it three times. And on the third time, that person will be the winner. So good luck to everybody there. Let's go. There's one. There's two. And the winner of the free week is... DFS and props. Congratulations, DFS and props. I believe this is like your second or third time winning. Again, guys, just like yesterday's video, we you can have multiple winners. So come back every single day. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell notification so you know when we go live or when we do videos, you can get in there and you can leave a comment for everybody and you have a chance to win free content. It's super easy. It's super simple, super fast. So congratulations again, DFS and props. Hit us up here and then hit us up either on Twitter at advisors underscore team or hit us up via email dfshelp1 at gmail.com. So we're going to break it down. I waited as long as I possibly could today just to kind of see if anybody had, you know, we were waiting on all of the pictures to be shown. We're still missing a couple, which I think it's going to wait until basically lineups come out before we know who's going to be pitching for other ones so we're going to jump right into it we're going to look at this so in technically on FanDuel you to play this first game you have to play the all-day slate um, just because it is um, an hour and 30 an hour and a half before the next game which all the games are at this time there's one slate basically because it is the all-star break there's no sunday night baseball once the teams are done the all-stars will fly out so looking at this you got dane dunning versus patrick corbin you got uh dane dunning really hasn't seen very many of them 13 plate appearances 417 batting average 15.4 k percentage versus patrick corbin 51 plate appearances 174 batting average 25.5 k percentage here now you guys know basically stack against patrick corbin has been the mo pretty much all year his last game against against Cincy which we took Cincinnati five innings 10 hits six earned runs two strikeouts three fantasy points did have a really good game against Seattle seven innings nine strikeouts no earned runs 58 fantasy points but he followed that prior with three fantasy points 22 24 25 I'm trying to see if he's faced uh, Texas this year he has not the way Texas is hitting the bat I'm stacking Texas against Patrick Corbin um, he's very bad lately five I mean lately past couple of years five and ten record 513 ERA only 68 strikeouts 101.2 innings I'm looking at Texas I'm looking at if I'm playing the all-day slate I'm looking at Corey Kluber or Corey, Kluber, Corey Seager Marcus Simeon Jonah Heim or Mitch Garver depending on what catcher is out there Adolis Garcia, Josh Young, 
um, Nate Lowe. It really just depends. I will be looking at stacking the Rangers against Patrick Corbin. I would not want anything to do with Patrick Corbin to end the first half of the season. I will look at Dane Dunning for cash or tournaments I really don't mind. And then I'll throw in the Rangers as one of the top stacks. Next game, Oakland Athletics at Boston Red Sox. J.P. Sears versus Taylor Scott. If you watched yesterday's video, loved James Paxton. Came through us for us yet again because it, Oakland, they're bad. Uh, J.P. Sears has never faced uh, Boston before, but I'm not using him in Boston. If you go check out FantasyTeamAdvisors.com, we have the ballpark rain, ratings page. It shows you how many runs Boston has given up. Well, we can just look right now. So you can just look MLB and then... When you come down here, ballpark stat ratings. We'll look at that, and then I'll show you what I'm talking about. So you come down here. Fenway gives up the most amount of runs on the slate. Out of all of the ballparks on this slate, almost 50 more runs. And they're not even the top one. That's the thing. They rank fourth overall. So you look at that. Uh, they give up their 16.3 uh runs rating they've given up 97 home runs uh they're averaging 2.1 home runs a game you can just see the slugging everything everything says stack this game so that is what i'm talking about i'll be looking at stacking the boston bats against jp sears just depending on what team we get out there um kind of got to wait for the order but you can kind of expect some of you know if i'm looking Probably looking at uh, Ref Snyder at the top as a cheaper option. Justin Turner, obviously. Adam Duvall it mashes lefties. Kike Hernandez is a righty. Um, I just realized Jorge Alfaro is uh, back with Boston. And he actually signed a one-year contract. He's on the team after getting released from Boston, then released from Colorado. So he's a cheap option at the bottom of the order, righty on lefty matchup. So yeah, I'm definitely stacking the Red Sox against JP Sears. I won't. I don't want anything to do with either of these pitchers. Next game, Cubs at the Yankees. Kyle Hendricks versus Domingo Herman. Hendricks, 75 plate appearances, 20K percentage, 290 in batting average. I've told you, I I don't like Hendricks. Anytime he's pitching, um, he could have no batting average here against him. And I just do not like him. The fact of the reason is, um, doesn't usually get a ton of strikeouts against Milwaukee on July 4th, six innings, five strikeouts, one earned run, 34 fantasy points. Not too bad. Um, I just, I don't trust him enough. Obviously he doesn't face the Yankees much. So most of these bats are pro I guarantee most of these bats are going to be, uh, Harrison Bader and, without even looking yet, probably Harrison Bader. And I'm trying to think of the other players that haven't been on the Yankees before. Um, Bader, 26 of the 83. LeMahieu and Donaldson, that's right. So Bader's 9 for 24 with four doubles. Love me some Bader here. DJ is 5 for 20 with a triple. Donaldson's 4 for 10. So I told you yesterday, when I looked, I did not want to see Stanton in our lineup unless he's playing the outfield. Now, let's pause. Let me know if I'm right. That's what I said, and I've said that the whole time. So when Stan is in playing the outfield, he hits way better than when he's a DH. Yesterday, two home runs. Actually, he had a triple, and then they reversed it because it wasn't actually a home run. So uh, he had two home runs there. We had, in a lineup, we had Donaldson and Stanton. Uh, so we stacked Garrett Cole, Donaldson, Stanton, uh, Bader, and Volpe, and IKF. Uh, Bader came through, Stanton came through, Donaldson came through. Um, I kind of like to go back to the well with that. I would like to stack around this one again. I think I'm going to look at Anthony Rizzo, uh, Harrison Bader, Stanton if he's in the outfield. If he's DHing, I don't, I don't know if I want him if he's DHing, but again, might have to go with the, the hand here. Franchi Cordero got called back up. He could be starting here. In the outfield, he rakes in AAA, and he's raked before, so he could be a cheaper option if he's in there, a lefty on righty matchup. And then Domingo Herman, 29 plate appearances, 231 batting average, 34.5 K percentage. Um, obviously had the perfect game and then came and faced Baltimore, gave up nine hits, two earned runs, five strikeouts, and 4.1 innings. So I kind of like him to bounce back here. 
Um, I don't be surprised if he has a decent game. I kind of like Domingo Herman and the Yankees as a stack. I don't like the Cubs, and I don't want anything to do with Kyle Hendricks. Royals at the Guardians. We were right again yesterday. I said Gavin Williams against uh, Kansas City. Same thing. Um, I'm not. I don't want anything to do with Ryan Yarbrough. I'm going Shane Bieber. 104 plate appearances, 213 batting average, 29 K percentage against them. And looking at his numbers, seeing what he's done in the past against him, I feel like he just faced him not long ago. Yeah, two starts ago, six innings, eight strikeouts, no earned runs, 46 fantasy points. I'm looking at that again. Um, I'm running it back with Bieber. I'm looking at uh, maybe some of the Cleveland bats. As of right now, none really jump out because 15 plate appearances. Jose Ramirez would be one. Uh, maybe Josh Naylor, um, Stephen Kwan, Andres Jimenez. He can home run and he can steal bases. So those are kind of the bats I'd look at. I'm not looking at Yarbrough. I'm not looking at any Kansas City bats. I'm looking at Shane Bieber as my top option as the picture of this video and article today. Blue Jays at the Tigers. This one I was wrong on. Um, I think most people were. Uh, Blue Jays got no hit, a combined no hitter yesterday. Matt Manning in the bullpen. Um, Chris Bassett against the Tigers, 62 plate appearances, 232 batting average. And then Tariq Skubal, 40 plate appearances, 243. I don't, I honestly, I don't know what to do with this game. Um, Toronto should smash lefties. They got no hit yesterday. Uh, there's no way they don't get a hit today. Honestly, I'm very confused on this game. Um, in theory, on paper, Chris Bassett should have a very good game against Detroit because they rank almost dead last in runs scored. Um, but honestly, I don't know. Uh, as of right now, I would say Chris Bassett, take Chris Bassett against Detroit. Um, maybe some numbers come out. I'll wait for Vegas numbers to come out. Maybe something changes. I honestly don't know what to do in this game. Um, if I were to take Toronto bats, th I might just avoid this game because I just I can't get a read on it right now. Um, and and your gut instinct, especially in DFS, if you have a gut instinct about something or about a player, about something, a stack, usually go with that because if you don't, and then they you usually end up regretting it. So I am looking at possibly I, I don't know. Uh, no one has really had a bunch of success against Scooble. I think a, a sneaky option, Scooble here. I think people are going to be like, there's no way they're going to get no hit. I'm not going to say they're not going to get a hit. They're most likely going to get a hit. I will have some exposure to both of these pitchers, but I don't know about this game. So uh, Scooble in tournaments and Bassett in cash is where I'd go with in this one. Braves at Tampa Bay. Now, and, and I don't know if you were if you've been here with us for a while, um, and you've listened and you've you've talked to us and you've conversed. I've said that Tampa Bay had a really easy schedule to start the season. They were super hot. They were beating everyone even at home. They've lost seven straight, um, three and seven in the last ten. They've lost seven straight. The Braves are a better team. I think that we could see that again here. Elders never faced them before, and if you've been here in the past, you know that I absolutely love a pitcher that's never faced them before, or never faced a team before. So in that instance, I'm looking at Elder here against Tampa Bay. 7-1 record, 2-4-5 ERA. Coming off a, a not-so-good start against Cleveland, 6.2 innings, one strikeout, two earned runs, 27 fantasy points, but I'm still taking exposure there. He's still getting six-plus innings is exactly what we need, especially at 9,700 on FanDuel. I like me some Elder. And honestly, I'm probably stacking against Eflin. Eflin is the highest-priced pitcher on the slate still at 10,500. Um, coming off nine strikeouts against Philly, seven against Arizona, seven against Kansas City, five against San Diego. I just don't trust. I I don't trust his price. I don't like his price at all in FanDuel. It's ten thousand five hundred. I'm taking Elder, and I'm looking at stacks. I'm looking at Acuna seven for twenty five with a double and a home run. That's two eighty. I like that. Uh, Ozzy Albies seven for twenty three with a double triple home run. I like that. Darno four for seventeen. Don't know if he'll be in there. Uh, Sean Murphy I like. He's been on fire. He's been hitting home runs lately. So yeah, I'm looking at definitely uh, an Atlanta stack might be my first or second favorite stack. Uh, Acuna's Albies, um, probably Sean Murphy, Matt Olson as well. 
So I'm avoiding Eflin. He's just too high priced for me. I'm looking at Elder against them and then stacking the Braves. Phillies at the Marlins. Aaron Nola versus Jesus Lizard. Nola, 122 plate appearances, 237 batting average, 22.1K percentage. And then Lizardo here, 62 plate appearances, 246. Lizardo's actually 10300 on FanDuel, third highest priced. He's coming off of three straight 50-plus starts. The opponents weren't the best, St. Louis, Boston, and Pittsburgh, but I'm still looking at him. I think, I think you could see this as a low-scoring game. I think a lot more people will be on Nola. Not a lot of people will be on Lizardo. I'm going to look at Jesus Lizard here today. Uh, I don't mind him in tournaments. Maybe Nola in tournaments as well. I don't know if I trust him enough in cash. Um, no bats really jump out at to me right now, but I'm looking at Lizardo here um, and go under the radar a little bit. Mariners at the Astros. Logan Gilbert versus Brandon Belak. Gilbert, 90 plate appearances, 241. We used him... Uh, his last start against San Francisco. And I told you, I loved him against San Francisco in San Francisco. If you listen to us, all you got out of him was a complete game, seven strikeouts, no earned runs, 58 fantasy points out of him. Obviously, I don't think he's going to do the exact same thing here because this is Houston's, not uh, San Francisco. He hasn't faced them this year yet, but these games have been low scoring between these teams. They've been able to hold them. They've been able to stay in the games, kind of reminiscing of the, uh, was it the ALDS last year? Um, yeah, I like Logan Gilbert here. I'm not looking at BLAC at all. Um, I'm looking at Gilbert, who's had success. I think it's more of a tournament option or an SP2 on DraftKings there. Baltimore at Minnesota, Kyle Gibson versus Joe Ryan. Gibson, 53 plate appearances, 265 batting average, 22.6K percentage. Joe Ryan, 37 plate appearances, 147 there. Looking at this, Joe Ryan's the fourth highest priced pitcher. Trying to see if he's faced Baltimore this year. He has not. Um, I think this one could be go either way. Sun, I, and I was wrong on yesterday. I said I liked Sonny Gray. He's been pitching better. He's had success. Uh, Orioles, I think, put up six on him. Um, I don't I don't think they're going to do the exact same thing here. I kind of like both of these pitchers. I think Joe Ryan's more of your tournament option or your cash option. I think Kyle Gibson's more of your tournament option, but I'd rather lean on Ryan. And really, at the moment, no bats jump out to me. Cardinals at the White Sox. You got Steven Matz versus Lucas Giolito. Matz is, was relegated to the bullpen after being so bad this year um, starting. Pretty much since signing, he's 0-7 with a 5.02 ERA. Um, been in the bullpen since, let's see, basically May 19th, give or take, right around, yeah, about May 19th is when he was relegated to the bullpen. Now, he's he's, he's a starter. Um, I don't think, yeah, I don't think that uh so matthew libator was optioned back down to triple a this would have been his start i don't think he's going to be on a pitch count but i don't think he's going to go deep into the game i'm stacking i'm taking giolito here against the cardinals and i'm stacking the white Sox against mats hasn't seen much of them um but i am 100 looking at luis robert jr i'm looking at eloy jimenez um for the top two if i'm stacking uh, probably I'm trying to think who else <sighs> Tim Anderson has been one where it's like he should be batting way better than he is um, it's very confusing what Tim Anderson's doing but uh, we'll look at that if I'm stacking Anderson Luis Robert uh, or if you don't want to go Anderson I'd go Luis Robert Jr. Eloy Jimenez Andrew Vaughn maybe Jake Berger uh, Yasmani Grandal, Elvis Andrews, if you want to kind of pick and choose which righties you want out of the White Sox. But 100%, I will have a ton of exposure to both Robert Jr. and Eloy Jimenez. And I'm Steven Matz probably gives up five-plus earned runs. Reds at the Brewers, as of right now, to be announced versus Wade Miley. Wade Miley, 64 played appearances, 232 batting average against him. I still don't understand how Wade Miley has been effective as much as he is. 5-2 and two record, 3-3-6 ERA, but he's had two bad games in a row. Against the Cubs, five innings, four earned runs, four strikeouts, only 15 fantasy points. And then against the Mets, only four innings, three earned runs, two earned, or three strikeouts, two earned runs, 
15 fantasy points there as well. Trying to see if he's faced Cincinnati this year. He has not. I am not taking Wade Miley. I am taking the Reds, just like everybody else. Probably looking at a, an Ellie De La Cruz, um, Spencer Steer, Matt McLean, uh, Jonathan India, maybe even a little bit of Joey Votto as well. And then we don't know who's pitching there, so I can't really tell you. Brewers bats outside of like Willie Adamas, who we had in a lot of our lineups on Saturday. Only had two home runs, no big deal. Um, and then Christian Yelich, just depending on who the pitcher is. So my thought is Christian Yelich, Willie Adamas over here. And on this side, basically the Reds, Bats, who I, I mentioned. And then we'll kind of just wait for the lineups to come out. Rockies at the Giants, Kyle Freeland versus Logan Webb. Freeland, 130 plate appearances, 259 batting average, lifetime. Only 16.9K percentage. He's been bad. Um, it's not been good at all we've stacked against him so many times in the past lately we did houston against him they gave up four earned runs or got four earned runs against him against the dodgers we stacked six earned runs angels three earned runs atlanta seven earned runs he's been bad uh, he still goes five innings but i would definitely be looking at the giants bats here i would look at logan webb for tournaments against colorado and then i would be looking at the bats. so wilmer flores love him seven for 30 uh, one double, one home run. You got Austin Slater might lead off. If Austin Slater leads off, love him. Let's see how much he costs. Real quick on FanDuel, because that's what I have up. Austin Slater, 2,600, and he should be leading off. We used him uh, a couple of days ago, got uh, 9.2 fantasy points. Did not use him on Saturday. 22.2 uh, fan 22 .2 fantasy points. One for two with a home run. So... Uh, love me some Flor uh, Flores, Slater, um, Yastrzemski. Kind of might be it on that one. So, yeah, I'll have a little bit of exposure to Logan Webb, but I will be looking at the Giants' bats. The Pirates at the Giants. You got Carmen. <sighs> Lodzinski? I'm assuming the M is silent. Right? Because that would make sense. Uh, I've never heard of this name in my entire life. Trying to see what he's done. He's been a bullpen guy. Um, he's actually been in the bullpen for Pittsburgh. One inning, though. Uh, one inning, two innings. Yeah. So you're not going to use him. You would probably use Arizona Bats. I would be looking at uh, Cattell Marte, Corbin Carroll, um, Perdomo, Lourdes Gurriel Jr., and then Zach Davies, who cheated on his wife, which I'm going to bring up every time every time he pitches. He didn't cheat on his wife. Well, he maybe cheated on his wife, but he ghosted her. He literally went on a road trip to pitch in the major leagues and then never talked to her again and served her with divorce papers. So if you don't believe me, Google Zach Davies and his wife. Crazy. Um, <laughs> but pitching-wise, if we're looking at his resume here, 47 plate appearances, 12.8K percentage, 222 batting average. Don't really want anything to do with him even against pittsburgh um probably won't have any exposure i would rather take the arizona bats here and then the final game the mets at the san diego padres you got the scherzer the max the max scherzer versus joe musgrove you've got uh, scherzer against the padres 204 plate appearances 33.8 k percentage 166 batting average it's crazy to see, but he is the one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh highest priced pitcher on the slate. Usually, other years, he's been the highest, but he is old. He's getting up there. Uh, he's 8 and 2 record, 4.03 ERA. So he's bringing it down. Had a really good game against Arizona. Well, an okay game. He had nine strikeouts, but he gave up four earned runs. Against Milwaukee, nine strikeouts, two earned runs. So he's getting nine, nine, eight, eight strikeouts there. Um, Against the Yankees, he should have got a bunch of strikeouts, only had two, and then got lifted after 3.1. So looking at this, he has really good numbers. The Padre, he's dominated the Padres in the past. I kind of like him. And then Joe Musgrove, on the other hand, same thing. This could be a low-scoring game. 116 plate appearances, 200 batting average. I kind of like both of these pitchers. I think Scherzer's more of your cash. I think Musgrove is more of your GPP there. And right now, until we get all the numbers, the Vegas numbers, the weather, everything like that, I will let you know that there's not much I like about the bats until I see everything else. So, again, that is what we've got. We've got a ton of information on the website here. You can see some of the weather comes in when we have this. And then we do have a weather tab on our cheat sheet. Um, with our cheat sheet, we have... So, if you join today, 
Uh, you get BVP, stolen base targets, and trarian stacks, cheat sheet that comes with lineups, either main, FanDuel and DraftKings main, and early if there are an early slate, which there is not on this one. Um, those are great starting points. I tell people copy and paste those and then edit some of the lineups. Don't just don't just use those lineups 100% and don't change anything. They're a fantastic starting point. You can ask a bunch of people watching this video now. We have a ton of subscribers on this channel. We have a ton of people that have won. They have told us they really like what we do. And we've been doing it since 2014. As you can see up top, bringing home the bacon since 2014. Um, we know what we're doing and we hope to help. If this video is enough to get you going, all I ask for is a like and a subscribe. We're trying to get to 10,000 before in a, uh, NFL season, which I believe is in 61 days, I think. I think. I want to say it's, it's September 8th or September 9th. So we're very close. I'm very excited for that. If you have any questions, we'll try to answer them. Um, and then we'll just take this break. We're going to start uh, pushing. During this break of MLB, we're going to start building out the Discord channel. We're going to st And anyone who has a subscription on the website should get access to this Discord. Um, and then there will be a couple of free channels just for everyone in here. Want to really get that going. Want to get everything up and running. Um, we'll start pushing into some NFL content. We already have some NFL content here. Um, we're doing a couple of season long, uh, let's see. We've done season long, like guides on drafting. So we're going to do best ball guide. We're going to do, we've done this one called unlocking the secrets of Fanny football strategy in 2023. This one was out there. We put it out about two weeks ago, uh, which has been pretty neat. People have loved it. Um, once it loads. And then we've got uh, the the rankings. So if we've got, if you want to check this out, go check it out here. Uh, all down in here. And then we've got rankings as of July 2nd. This will be updated by tiers. You go through here. And if you have questions, let us know. Um and hopefully we're able to help you. And we've got how many are on here? 500, I think. 497. So if you like this, this is something you want. This is something we'll be putting in to different articles, different uh, like we'll have dynasty rankings and stuff like that. Uh, we're going to be looking at having a... Um, a season long league and if we don't get a season long league maybe we will just do like a league on FanDuel or DraftKings where we do like five dollars a week and then top three and then it'll be open for as many people that want to join so obviously the bigger the pot the better the odds of bringing home the bacon so that's what I've got in this video uh thank you so much to every single one of you that have been with us for this first part of this season first half of the season is in the books after today and it's, I think, honestly, this has been our best MLB season ever. The most amount of views on these videos, the most amount of interactions, the most amount of love and support from you guys. Um, I've had people donate. I've had people subscribe. Again, there's only a few coupon codes left. If you want the NFL season for $100 off right now, for $99 instead of $199, go to FantasyTeamAdvisor.com, hit FTA+, Plus, click the NFL tab, or the NFL one season pass and use the promo code NFL VIP all caps, all one word. You'll get a hundred dollars off. Good luck to everyone today. Let's have a fantastic little break this week and we'll be back on Friday to bring home the bacon. Peace.